Hey, hey, Tony guys here. Just popping in for a little video. Now, this uh be my little location. We are we in Manchester, England for a little while. And then I'll be in London. In Manchester, then we'll be over in old London. I'm still trying to adjust. It's time. That time difference, you know, when you... It's one thing when you in the states and you go backwards and forth a few hours, but to go five hours ahead, man, that's crazy on your body. So it's gonna take me a few days to get adjusted. But I wanted to pop in on here because I was, you know, in my little series when when I'm touching on this dating and relationship stuff. Every now and then, if I get the opportunity, I'll go through and try to. You know, read a few comments and then get a question that one of you may have that's relationship related and touch on that. And had a question come in that I seen that said, you know, Tony, can you talk about being a fiance and moving in with your fiance? And this is what I want you to understand, because to each their own, there are exceptions to the rule. There are things where one thing I believe is that when you do marriage things before marriage, it can prolong the marriage. We've seen it happen. That's not rocket science. We've seen it happen a lot of times. But for myself, I was an exception to the rule. And that's why I don't teach it based on personal experience because I realized I was an exception to the rule because I am a black man who was raised in a two-parent home. And we may have less than 50% you know, of black men, probably around 30% or so of black men raised in a two-parent home. So, although my wife and I were not walking with the Lord and we were not living right and doing the right thing and we were in our backslidden, backslidden state, it's raining outside and coming on down too. It's crazy over here. These people got to work in the rain. The people, they building a new apartment complex look like and they got to just work in the rain. That's crazy. And we were in our backslidden state, but I was raised in a two-parent home, so I still had every intention to get married. Now, had I not seen, had I not been privileged enough to see my father in the home every day while I was in fornication and my wife got pregnant, I probably would have not married her. But I also realized that she was an exception to the rule because... She was a woman of color who was a biomedical science major and her father did not raise her in the home, but her father is was a lawyer and that was very rare. And then she also, not only was her father a lawyer, her parents were immigrants. And she was an immigrant, I guess you would call it. But then they said naturalized citizen. My wife, she didn't like the term, you know, immigrant. But I'm like, that's a real term. It's not a derogatory slur. But they came over from Jamaica. And for her to be a biomedical science major, getting A's in, in college, that was very rare. And I, and I felt convicted because... Not only did I want marriage, I also felt convicted because I felt like I had taken her off her path or distracted her and kind of derailed her. And I saw really just kind of the energy that she relayed to me when she let her parents know she was pregnant. It was almost like, to me, she was kind of, I don't know how they really took it because I wasn't there. Or like when she told her dad, I don't know what, how it was told to him and what she said, but it was kind of like a feeling of being disowned 
and it and it made me feel like, man, I'm all she got. Now her mom, I didn't meet her dad until five years of marriage, so they didn't really have a super close relationship. We had me and my wife and I had been married five years when I met her dad for the first time. Now I think she had seen him, but she hadn't taken to introduce me. And I remember asking her, do you want me to call your dad and ask him for your hand in marriage? She was like, no, that's not necessary. And that's the truth of the matter. And so it was, I also felt just being a man like, hey, I've, yes, she made this decision. Yes, she's an adult. But I also was able to realize, and this where sometimes people not honest about this, is I was able to realize where I was more worldly than her, that I knew more about the game than her. So, yes, although she made the decision to be sexually active, I still knew that I knew more about the game and finessing and, you know, just running game and that she was kind of like a deer in the headlights. And so I took ownership. And say, hey, I got her in this position because had I said I'm abstinent, she wouldn't have cared at all. She wouldn't have forced me to sleep with her. She wouldn't have tried to coerce me or try to call me gay or none of that. She would have been like, okay, cool. Let's just keep keep building. Like, let's let's hang out. Let's keep building. Let's just be in a relationship. Like, it ain't even about all that. Like, she would have been totally fine with it. And because she wasn't. You know, and still isn't. She's not a overly sexual person like that. And so I knew that that was me kind of pushing that narrative of, oh, a man got to do this, a man got to do that. And that's why I teach on the game like that. So you have to realize that God's way of not shacking up. And shacking up means being in fornication. And living together. It's kind of how we... Now, we see shacking up as just living together. But just how I'm in this furnished apartment, right across the street is student living for college students. There's such thing as co-ed dorms, co-ed apartments. And there's certain situations where men and women live in this, under the same roof. So shacking up is not living together shacking up is when you plan married when you plan house when you having sex and you living together now you shacking up like you married but you're not married but you sexually active now when you're not living together you're not shacking up but if you have a sex then you just fornicating and so i'm gonna clarify that based on my terms you it may mean something totally different to you but just when you hear me say these words when i say shacking up i mean sleeping together and living together when i say fornicating i mean just sleeping together and when you're not sleeping together even if you living together then i say you doing it god's way because living together is not the sin. The sin is fornication. Because it's going to be times where you may have to live together for financial reasons. But if you're not fornicating and into the lasciviousness and sexual acts, then you're not in sin. But living together can prolong a relationship. And so... The way I believe it should be done, even when you are engaged, is that the two of you should have your own place, ideally. Now, if it's too late for that, for y'all who are engaged and not even engaged, but you living together, you have put the cart before the horse. So what, it, what is very important is in this situation is that you remember that you're not married. And what I mean by this is when you fall in love, 
when you truly fall in love, you're going to know that you're in love. You're going to know somebody truly loves you. Because love is such a powerful emotion that it becomes an action and that it is undeniable. So therefore, if you are confused, you are not loved and the person is not in love with you. If you have to ask, if you have to wonder, they're not in love with you. And that needs to be understood. Now, in a relationship, there will be times like, let's say a man starts snoring. I snore now, my wife says. If I started snoring when we were dating, we probably would not be together. Because that snoring disrupts sleep. It disrupts her sleep. So if I have a night of snoring, she might sleep two hours, three hours, because she wake up at the sound of a pin drop. So if I started snoring before she fell in love with me, we most likely wouldn't have made it. And that's what you have to realize about living together. Living together brings, before you falling in love, it brings a whole nother element and that's why 50 to 70% probably of couples who move in together before marriage end up breaking up and calling off the marriage because you're seeing things and you're experiencing things. Let's say a woman period is on and she just hop in the shower real quick. Like she, she rushing and she hop in the shower and she forget that her tampon is in and then she have she take her tampon out and you know sit it on the sit it down right there or something and she's soaking wet she rushing and now yes there will be women in the comments who will act like this has never ever in a million years happened in the history of womandom and that they will never in a million years make such a airheaded mistake but this happens in real life and if a man is with a woman and he does not love her and he mess around and for whatever reason she could have tried to dispose of her tampon wrapped it up in tissue and put it in the, the garbage or what have you and he just and it's on the top she didn't want to dig her hand in there or she didn't have another bag to put it in or she was rushing and it's on the top and maybe the the blood, you know, seep through the, the toilet tissue. If a man does not love a woman and he see her bodily function, let's say she got gas, she got IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and she had to go to the or she Crohn's disease or whatever it is, and she got to be going to the bathroom. And let's say, it you know, booty go to stinking. That bathroom is just, ooh, it just lit all the way up. And, or let's say she got gas. <laughs> Might have not made it, you know. Might have not made it. If, if burping, passing gas, man or woman, when you don't love each other, it's easier to see the person as ill. But when you fall in love, you accept everything that come with that person. Every, all the good, all the bad, the flaws. Like, for example, one thing that some women struggle with is driving. Some women struggle with they parking, with turnaround curbs. And I see this all the time on women cars, how the, the rim of their tire is eight all up it is eight up the reason why women struggle with that is because the part of the brain that processes spatial reasoning is is much larger you know in men than women it's stronger or if not larger 
And so a woman's spatial reasoning, that's why on average women aren't as good at sports as men because of that spatial reasoning and those motor skills and all of those things. There are some women who can develop to the level to where her level is just like a, a man, like Caitlin Clark. She can shoot, uh, it seems, as well as a guy can, as well as any guy, just about. And so she's developed to that level. She's rare. She's in a class of her own. And so if a man don't love a woman and she doing stuff that he considers clumsy, like let's say she drive his car and he love his car and she go to take that turn and she scrub the curb and it take the the paint off his rim and mess up his rim, she liable to get left because he don't love her. He may start to hate her because he love his car more than he love her because he's still getting to know her. But they done moved so fast. They done moved in. So this is where you got to understand that when you move in and you're not married, you got to live as if you're living with someone you just met. Meaning, when you go to the bathroom, you got to put, you got to have you some poopery. Put you some poopery. I've been married to my wife for 17 years. We just celebrated 17 years. And my wife has never, intentional, she's never passed gas in front of me. She ain't never just sat there and just, brrr, like, she keeps and she believes in a level of decorum. Now, she a burp, so that's her thing, because I guess she feel like burping better than passing gas. And I would have to agree. I would have to agree. Because I'm going to tell you, that burping be about to have me to the divorce court. And this is the thing. It's just, this is what I want women to understand, because men and women are very different so this always is mind-boggling to a woman because a woman like man we listen to y'all fart we listen to y'all snore we see boogers in y'all nose and cold in your eyes and we take care of you when you're sick we'll treat y'all hemorrhoids we'll do this and that like a woman is like a i think that's why most nurses is women most of the CNAs and RNs and LPNs is women because a woman has something in her brain that God has given her to be able to stomach a lot. But a man is not like that. So the grace you give a man, you can't assume that he'll give you that same grace. Now, when you talk to him, he may say, yes, he is that type of guy that he's okay with it. But on average, you have to assume that a man will be disgusted by you if you farting, if you burping, if you mess around and leave a tampon somewhere, if you scraping the rims on his car. A lot of stuff that women do. And that's why a lot of times I talk to women and you know, they'll I'll be on a coaching session or a woman will reach out to me and she'll say something like, she'll say, Tony, I was in this relationship with this guy and everything was perfect. And then all of a sudden, he just disappears. He just ghosts me. Or all of a sudden, his energy just changed and he was like a different person. And he just like, almost like he cut off his feelings for me. And... Anytime a woman tell me that. Now, one is sometimes it's another woman that he already knew or a woman that he met. is Sometimes it's another woman. But I would say equally as much is it something that he's seen. Like he either, the woman had an off day on her pH and it was a smell or her breath was bad one day. Or she had the cold well, but boogers, when you know when you got a cold and you got that mucus and you blowing your nose and you blow your nose and it don't all the way come out and you got that cold well, 
uh, mucus in there, or she passed gas, or she snored, or she burped, or her lace front started to come up, and he could see the glue, or her wig was wiggling. I wonder if they call it wig, short for wiggling. Her wig was wiggling. Or her track, her tracks was poking out. Or or had separated, he could see her tracks. Or the, the, the weave had a smell to it. Like, it, this, a lot of this stuff come from these factories in India. So when you get stuff out of them factories, they have a very distinct smell. And a young brother, one of my mentees, said to me the other day that he cannot stand weave because they have a smell now you probably it's probably exists but if you could create something that got a little bit of scent that's that's not harmful with a little bit of moisture in there and it's a weave spray i don't care if it exists create your own and just do a better looking bottle come up with a cool little name and come up with a couple different scents. Now listen, don't nobody want to be smelling cucumber melon in nobody's head. But just a little just a little standard smell. Okay, so we don't want to smell watermelon kiwi in nobody's head. And so, but if you could create that, you might you'll be a million now. You probably be a million now. Now, if you sign up for my year of coaching program, which is 10k. I help you get there, but other than that, you still could get there. But that we might have had a bad smell. The, the, the Indian man who was processing it out there in India, because you know they get their hair out the drains. They some of that hair that y'all wear, they get it out the drains. They showed online how they do it. The man sitting there barefoot, and he just beating the mess out that hair, pulling it through them little combs and. They have full of lint, full of trash, full of everything. They get it out the the how drains, the, the the drain, the how go down the drain. They go to the to the recess, to the reclaimed water, and run a thing through there and just grab up all the how, grab up all the how. And that's why, that's why sometimes you get that weave and you be. around you trying to study or trying to focus or trying to order something in the store and all we hear that's because they have that drain but you you thought it because it's just because it was tight it was loosening it up you thought it because you growing new how no that's because you got weed bugs you got weed bugs in there and that right there, that'll turn a man's stomach. And then the, here's the thing. So we have things in our brain. Our brain is like kind of wired and it's fine-tuned as humans. So you know, you may have a brain that, some people have the brain to where if somebody's sitting around you and, and let's say y'all at lunch at work and somebody... See the window sill right there. The way my brain wired, I feel like I I rather I'd rather jump off that right there than hit, than hear you chew. And some people have that. So that that pad, I done gave myself a headache. Not with that pad. That's y'all going brain dead with all that pad. And I can't even imitate it no more. My head hurt. And so. That man, that might be a pet peeve. All that patting. And, and then some of y'all, instead of patting, you get that little finger. You get that little finger. And, and think you're doing something with that little finger. And you go to scratch with that little finger. That right there could be a pet peeve. And it dry that man up a wall. Because it might make him think you dirty. And especially that weave go to smelling. You ain't got no good spray for it. 
or the spray smells bad because it's mixing, it's mixing with your sweat from your workout and then you can't wash it and then the spray mixing with it. So now he, he start to feel like, oh, he don't love you yet. Y'all live together, but he's not in love. It take a man at the least two years to fall in love. And this in this two years, every time a woman get on his nerves, it add a week to a month for him to fall in love. Because you got to remember, a man's heart is different. Because a man is also wired, this same man that you want to love you is also wired to go to war. And to cut somebody's head off and hold it up above his head and drink his blood. That's that's the heart that you're trying to turn into a lover's heart. This same heart of a man. That's why P. Diddy did all the stuff he did. And he, he is a normal man. And that's why he, and he's not normal now, but understand what I'm saying. He walks the streets as a normal man. Like, he, for, for all of these years, before we knew of any of this, any woman would have wanted to be with P. Diddy for his success and his ambition and his just go get her before the stuff came out now. But even with, I always felt like he was, that he took out Tupac and Biggie. I always felt like that. God forgive me, but I always felt like he, I just could feel his spirit. It looked like he had something to do with it. I always felt like that. But then when all this stuff here coming out, so think about this. This is a man. But P. Diddy ain't the only one. His parties was not by himself. His parties, all them other men that was there saying, said to have been sleeping with other men, doing drugs, underage girls, and all this other stuff. These is men who is powerful men, men who are envied by other men, men who are desired by women. This is the heart that you changing. This the heart that you dealing with. And so it take a man being intentional about growing and changing. And so when you move in with a man prematurely before he has fallen in love, you greatly decrease the chances of him actually marrying you. Because, men, we fall in love through communication, meaning good, happy, healthy conversation, not debating. If you want to beg to differ with a man all the time, he is not going to fall in love with you. It's impossible. It's impossible. A man do not want to be going back and forth and having to fight and, and claw to get his point across to, to the woman he supposed to spend the rest of his life with you're gonna run him away he will not fall in love if you are an argumentative woman who love to debate love to play devil's advocate you're gonna be unhappy with whatever man you got or get with trust me when i tell you or he gonna be cheating on you and just making you think you win in the arguments and he out here power driving something it's just not the nature of a man to be arguing and going back and forth and so this is what you got to realize and understand. If you move in prematurely, or even as a fiance, if you move in with this man and you're living with him and he hasn't fallen in love with you, and falling in love is not something you can ask a man. You got to feel it. You can't ask him, are you in love with me? Because for one, you setting yourself up to get your feelings hurt real bad. Because if he's an honest guy and he's not in love, he's going to tell you. If he's not an honest guy or he don't want to hurt you, he's going to lie. You will know when he is in love. It, it pretty much will feel like he'll drink your dirty bath water. But R. Kelly would have did that and R. Kelly did not love you. So that is not always indicative. But you will be able to tell by his level of commitment, his level of attention, his level of focus, his level of sacrifice. Just like what he does for you and how he tries to help you or make your life easier. 
consistently without adding sorrow. That's how you will know he's in love with you. But hey, I'll finish this up on another video. I just hit 30 minutes. So I don't want to talk too long because I could talk four hours. God bless you. We'll talk soon. Hey, take your time. The lesson from this is take your time. Prolong moving in. Prolong sex. Prolong husband benefits. Cooking every day. Cleaning every day. Doing laundry every week. Slobbing on knob. All of the sexual things prolong all of that as long as you can and if you can until marriage and just build make love to the mind spend quality time and communicate in a healthy way and that that's gonna give you the best chance for y'all to fall in love hit it off get married move in right off into the sunset Hey, it's Tony Gaston. God bless you. We'll talk soon.